With so many people unable to buy any kind of new graphics card, they're relying more than ever on their old cards to keep them going until inventory issues get sorted out, if they ever do. But how much GPU do you actually need? They say you don't need to upgrade your current card if it can play everything you want at the time. I mean, I personally think that's wrong, but maybe they're onto something. But in that case, let's take a look at one of my favorite budget cards from the past, the NVIDIA 750 Ti. Is it focused? Focus, here, it'll focus here. It'll focus there. There it is. Look how tiny it is, it's so cute. The 750 Ti was released all the way back in February of 2014 with an MSRP of $150. Back when games like, what the hell was out back then? Watch Dogs. Okay, so there wasn't, there wasn't a lot of good games released in 2014, it turns out. Titanfall, I didn't play that. Hearthstone, Alien Isolation. I mean, I guess 2014 wasn't like a banner year or anything for PC games. But even back then, I feel like it was punching well above its weight for its price point. I originally bought this card to put into my HP small form factor PC. You know, that was all the rage back then. You buy a cheap business PC, throw a graphics card in, and you call it a budget gaming PC, and you get a couple hundred thousand views on YouTube. Wish I jumped on that trend. Only. The small form factor PC I was using meant that I needed a half height requirement, and I couldn't have any auxiliary power due to the 240 watt power supply it came with. So my only option really was the 750Ti. The MSI version I managed to track down could be converted from full size to half height and it runs completely off the PCI Express slot which meant it's perfect for my surplus e-waste machine. I used this HP as my media PC, it wasn't my main gaming rig or anything, and I would travel with it occasionally when I went out of town for work. It always surprised me with how well it could keep up with the modern titles. I remember playing Doom and Metal Gear Solid 5 at 1080p 60 frames a second with no issues. So let's take a look at how it handles some more recent titles. I'd like to think it's still going to hold its own, but I think that 2 gigs of video memory is really going to hold us back. I'm going to stick it in my main gaming rig right here with a Ryzen 3700X which will give it plenty of breathing room to show us exactly what this card can do. First thing, I need to swap out my 3070, and to do that I need to open up my case, and I only use the Gamers Nexus approved method of removing the side panel. Oh my god, I'm so glad it didn't break. You can see the massive size difference between these two cards, but will I notice a performance difference? I mean, I know that's a dumb question, but... I started off with 3D Mark Time Spy to set a base level of performance, and it scored, uh, hey, 1469. Nice. And it gave an overall rating of, uh, good on the results page. 3D Mark, you're gonna make the 750 blush. Just look at that cute little thing, spinning its fans, living its best PC gaming life. The first game I tried was Battlefield 5. I've never actually played it, but it was 5 bucks on sale and seemed like a good title to throw at the tiny 750Ti. This game threw me right into the intro sequence before I could check any settings, so I decided to roll with whatever it set and see how it did. I didn't even have an FPS counter to constantly watch while playing. My first impression was, dang, this is playing perfectly fine. Without knowing what anything was set at or what my frames were at, the game was completely playable, even through these sequences with tons of particles on the screen. It didn't feel like 60 FPS, but it played just fine. When I finally got into the settings menu, I found they're all set to low and 1080p. I turned on the FPS counter and it was averaging around 40, but it never dipped below 30. Overall, it was perfectly playable at the default settings and it still looked pretty good. Next, I tried my arch nemesis, Cyberpunk 2077. I haven't played this since launch where I really enjoyed it, but it was a bit of a struggle to get it running on my ultra wide monitor and my 1080, so I was really curious to see how the 750Ti would fare. I decided to keep the not knowing the FPS at first theme going, as I'm sure we're all guilty of watching the FPS counter almost as much as the actual game. And I think having it on and off give two completely different experiences in a game. So right off the bat, it's running like trash. I don't know what the FPS is, but it's well below 30. Hey, I haven't played this in a while. I wonder if they fixed that one. Oh, no. Still there. I decided to turn on the FPS counter and see what we were at, and I had a whopping 17 FPS. I turned on the resolution to 720, and it bumped it up to 25 FPS. And then I set the dynamic resolution, and I got it up to 30, but it kind of looked like it had Vaseline smeared all over the screen. Next, I tried Psychonauts 2, because, well, it's 
the newest game in my library, so it seemed like a good fit. And at the default settings, it felt okay. I didn't seem to notice any hiccups or stuttering or anything. The resolution seemed a little weird, and I realized later it's because the scaling was set kind of high. Once I turned on the FPS counter, I saw I was getting about 85 frames per second on the default low settings. I turned the resolution scaling up to 85%, which cleared it up a lot, and then it got me right around 60 FPS. This game was perfectly playable with the default settings, and you'd have no issues playing the whole game through. Since I remember playing Doom originally on this card, I wanted to see how it held up, and I thought I was getting better. I only got 45 frames per second average, but this game is crazy. It feels like it's at 60 or as smooth as 60, even though it says it's at 45. Something about the optimization on this game means it runs super smooth no matter what. And then I had to throw everyone's favorite, Grand Theft Auto V. I mean, we've all seen it tested. We all know it's kind of a benchmark. Thankfully, I didn't have to install anything and sit here for hours while it updated. Are we all excited to buy it again on the PS5? I had it set on 1080p with everything set to normal, and the benchmark regularly hit 100 FPS but never dipped below 60. GG. I actually played the game for a little bit too, and it averaged 100 most of the time. So, no problem there. So first off, I am so glad this card worked well. I don't know if I could have handled another video of me fighting slow and old hardware, taking hours to get anything to load, having it run so bad there's no point in even testing it. I don't know if I could handle that again. Second, honestly this card still kind of rocks. I didn't test any of the popular esports titles because honestly there's not a reason to. This card will handle any of those perfectly fine high frames with any settings you want really. In fact, this card that can be had for as low as $60 it will enable you to play the vast majority of PC games out there as long as you're willing to make some small sacrifices to resolution and quality settings. But as we saw, some games even on low look great. Battlefield 5 looked amazing for being on low settings. And honestly, keeping that FPS counter off really enhances the experience. I know, we all want the latest and greatest card and we're all waiting for that in-stock notification to come up and snag a 3080 Ti for $1200. But according to Steam, 68% of gamers are still on 1080p. And well, you just don't need a super high-end card to push that monitor and have a good PC gaming experience. Many of us are willing to spend the money for a high-end card, but where do the diminishing returns really start? It's easy for me to say all this, being lucky enough to have a 3070 myself, but I can honestly say I don't play any more games than I did when I had my 1080. Sure, I was able to turn up the settings and smooth out the frame rates in something like Cyberpunk, but if I was still on my 1080, I'd still be perfectly happy. The 750 Ti proved to me that it isn't quite dead yet, and while it's not gonna keep you going for years to come, you could still get by with it if that's all you had. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and feel free to let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, you know all that normal stuff. And until next time, catch you in the next one.